The topic we are going to uh, speak about is the current crisis in Greece, and I thought of, you know, um, uh, uh, putting uh, before you uh, two crucial uh, questions and trying to answer them. Uh, I hope I'll do uh, in a sufficient manner. So the questions are, uh, is the crisis in Greece a European crisis or is it a local crisis? Uh, and the second question is, uh, should Greece uh, stay in the Euro or leave the Euro? Uh, these are questions that have been uh, hotly debated uh, back in Greece, in the press, in blogs, in media. And uh, uh, I have a strong opinion about you know, both questions. And let me uh, try to answer them. Now, uh, is the Eurozone in crisis? Uh, well, the obvious question, uh, answer is yes, it is. The European Union evolved, as you know, from the European Economic Community. It had for a long time only a common agricultural policy as its aim. After the 18, 1980s, it started focusing on regional development policies, on industrial policies. Later, uh, uh, the monetary unification of Europe became a major issue. Uh, that was in the early 1990s. And uh, the Maastricht Treaty was signed, and uh, uh, c countries wanting to join the future euro had to uh, follow uh, parallel policies. Uh, there was a fund, the so-called cohesion fund, that would uh, give to poorer countries money for improvement of infrastructures and help them uh, submit their uh, economic policies to uh, the maxims of the Maastricht Treaty, which were four, uh, keep your budget deficit lower than 3%, of GDP, uh, keep your public debt lower than 60% of your GDP, keep uh, inflation down, and keep interest rates down. Uh, now, uh, the European Union, with the introduction of the euro, uh, lowered transaction costs immensely and created this big market of very prosperous uh, nations. And smaller countries like Greece, Portugal, Ireland were hoping to benefit, as they did actually uh, at the start, from uh, joining uh, this common currency. But joining the currency meant that uh, these countries abandoned certain policies that uh, were at hand when they were in trouble, uh, the most important of them being uh, the uh, exchange rate of, of, uh, of the currency, the foreign exchange rate. So in case of loss of competitiveness in the past, you could devalue your currency, whereas in the European Union, uh, you have a big uh, burden on your shoulders to uh, stay competitive uh, at other levels in production, design, innovation, uh, keeping labor costs down, you cannot play with the exchange rate uh, of, uh, of the currency anymore. Now, the European Union uh, didn't pay attention to, uh, to this because since it was very slow in creating common policies, it gave this framework, introduced the uh, 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 European Stability Pact, uh, and certain other policy guidelines, uh, the Lisbon Treaty being the most important of these, and um, uh, it didn't do anything to uh, assist individual countries in uh, complying with uh, uh, certain rules. Uh, like, for example, uh, the European Union had no uh, authority over fiscal decisions Fiscal policy was left to individual countries, so fiscal systems were totally and still are totally diverse. Then, 
uh, in the process uh, since some developed countries like France or Germany had problems with uh, their public debt, the Maastricht criteria were not uh, paid attention to before some countries joined uh, the Euro. So there were inherent uh, problems that could lead eventually to a shock. And the uh, last thing that happened was that the European Union uh, moved, I mean the individual economies moved differently uh, the German economy introduced uh, uh, labor reforms in, uh, in after the year 2000 and it created a greater advantage for it. Uh, despite being, uh, Germany being a, 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 a surplus country in its current account, uh, it, as you know it exports far more than it imports. Uh, it uh, introduced labor reforms, whereas other countries did not do the same. And, uh, well, the central authorities of the European Union never thought that it would be, uh, it would, a moment would come when they would have to introduce uh, a, a policy against uh, financial crisis. But after the year 2008, things started deteriorating here and there, banking panic in Ireland, uh, budget deficits in, in both in Greece and Portugal, and uh, uh, things are getting worse and worse, as you, I don't have the time now to speak in detail about how Greece uh, uh, so uh, interest rates uh, go very high and uh, was excluded, so to speak, from capital markets and uh, has signed the memorandums of understanding with the AU and the IMF uh, to be bailed out. Uh, now, this means that uh, the, the, there is a crisis in the Eurozone and the Eurozone, by its design, uh, is not a, an optimum currency area, as economists argue, so there is an instability element in it that needs to be addressed and solved by European Union leaders in, uh, in the near future. So the first answer uh, to the question is yes. But the second question also uh, uh, gets answered with a yes. The Greek, Greece is also in a crisis of its own. Uh, for Greece, the introduction of the euro meant uh, the lowering of uh, interest rates. Uh, Greek bonds were a little uh, uh, exp uh, more expensive than the German bonds, but to, uh, let's say, 0.5 to 1% more for a long time. And this allowed uh, Greek banks to give credit not only to businesses, but to, to the average man too. Uh, the introduction of the euro was uh, like, say, uh, a slipping pill that uh, helped the Greek authorities postpone necessary reforms, uh, not seeing what was happening abroad and what might occur you know, in the near future. So the Greek economy was uh, following a, a, a demand-driven growth path. Uh, this started uh, with the governments of Andreas Papandreou since the uh, 1980s. The central government was seen as the engine of growth of the economy. It distributed money to uh, social classes and through the banking system to businesses. The European Union funds went through the government, to the construction business, to every business in the country. So the government was very central and was giving things. Uh, a duality between the private sector and the state-run sector uh, uh, was, became more articulate. And nothing was done every time that uh, um, public servants tried to really implement reforms, uh, they faced an outcry from demonstrators, 
but from the mass media as well, uh, from uh, their own party too. So reforms were postponed, like reforms in the insurance system and elsewhere. And, uh, well, as everyone knows, uh, uh, and there was, you know, Jimi Hendrix uh, uh, had a song about this, what goes up must go down, and spinning wheel has got to go round. Uh, that's Jimi Hendrix. So a, a bubble, it, it, gets, it gets created, but eventually it busts. The stage of euphoria is followed by a stage of distress. So uh, the Greek economy and political leaders from both major parties um, were reluctant to introduce reforms, were accommodated with the system as it, this was running, and uh, uh, to top it all, they quarreled publicly before the European Union about Greek statistics, uh, once in the year 2004 and then in the year 2009, denouncing one another about uh, the, you know, truth in, in, in in the deficit. And the result was, uh, of course, that uh, Greece is now uh, outside the uh, capital markets. Uh, the Greek government has introduced uh, many uh, hard measures. Uh, uh, salaries and wages were cut. Uh, you are all familiar with uh, the tax hikes, the property tax. And people uh, are, of course, outraged. Now, what should be done? Is uh, an exit of the euro uh, an option for the Greek economy? Uh, my answer to this question is no. Uh, the Greek economy is, it's been 30 years now, is embedded in the international division of labor of Europe. Europe is its main uh, uh, trade partner. Uh, Greece used to have uh, quite an industry back in the 1980s, but it was protected. So 50% of Greek industry disappeared in the course of the last uh, 25 years. Greek ag agriculture is also not competitive because uh, private property in agriculture is very small and you cannot run an agricultural business uh, in economic terms as competitive as the, as the Spaniards do, for example, uh, not to speak of uh, other countries in the region that are not EU members. So Greece has become a services economy. And uh, uh, now, if Greece were to exit the euro, uh, the, it's out of the capital markets, uh, it will be out of any EU IMF funds, where would it find the money to import goods? Uh, I mean, we are importing lemons from Chile and uh, grapes from South Africa. Uh, production of primary products and secondary products uh, has withered. The services sector is 70% of Greek GDP. Second, if we go out and devalue the, the, the new drachma, the, the burden of the public debt uh, will be so immense that uh, not one, not two, but perhaps five generations will have to work hard to get the revenue to repay the debt. And uh, so despite you know, uh, the hard times that the Greek people face in front of them and the up, upward hill we have to climb, I think that uh, we should stay in the Euro, despite the Eurozone's crisis. We should try to honor our uh, contract with uh, uh, the European Union and the IMF. This doesn't mean that we don't, uh, we cannot, uh, introduce new policies that will accommodate uh, those who were, uh, were were hit very hard by 
the austerity measures. Because we have to do two things. First of all, we have to stop accumulating new debt. And when you hear that, you know, Greece doesn't need new loans to cover past deficits, that will be the day when, uh, you know, we will start reversing uh, the trend. So we have to do this, and we have to introduce uh, growth policies, policies that will, in my view, have to, you know, uh, benefit services that bring uh, uh, money to the country, uh, export-oriented industries, uh, uh, activities that will be supply-side and not so much demand-driven as it used to be in the past. Uh, so, th for these reasons, to put it in a nutshell, I don't think that uh, the idea of um, exiting the euro is sound at the moment. Uh, of course, I am fully aware that what I uh, uh, say uh, can be refuted by others who would like to see the country, you know, uh, relieve itself immediately. Uh, I'm fully aware that what uh, I say will mean probably that we have to make a deep dive, try to uh, get back on our feet. And once we get back on our feet, I think that we have also uh, the people who uh, stand now outside the political system and they can uh, uh, renegotiate with uh, the European Union uh, ways to, to Greece's recovery that are not discussed at the present. Uh, because the European Union uh, always puts in front the moral standard, uh, sorry, uh, the moral hazard issue, doesn't want uh, Greece to get out to escape its present conditions very easily because it wants to set an example for other countries. But uh, it, after a year or two, uh, nothing uh, says that we cannot uh, renegotiate uh, because uh, eventually 